All right, let's talk about the NFL draft, specifically the New England Patriots portion of the NFL draft. Uh, I wish that I could take a deep dive on every team, but that ship has sailed at this point. Um, I just don't have the time to be able to do that anymore. If I was going to be able to space it out over the last three weeks, I might have been able to do it. But at this point, if I did it, I mean, nobody would even care because the draft would have been long gone by that point. So um, I'm going to just give a few nuggets of, of, of thoughts that I have on the draft. Um, starting with Carolina Panthers at number one at Bryce Young, I think it was the right decision. Um, you know, a lot of people were on the CJ Stroud train for number one there for a while. And, you know, we even had Anthony Richardson at number one for, for, for a little bit there for some mock drafts, even Will Levis, who I'll get to in a minute, uh, at number one at times. And I think in Vegas, the Vegas odds had, um, Will Levis as like the second highest odds to go at number one before the draft, like crazy stuff. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of different hype trains going on for that number one pick. I never subscribed to anything other than Bryce Young going number one. Uh, I think if you look back at my mock drafts, it'll support that. I truly believed, even as an Ohio State fan as I am, that Bryce Young was the best quarterback in this draft. C.J. Stroud was the number two quarterback in this draft. I truly believed that. I think that they're both fantastic. I think they both have their own pros and cons. But I think for Carolina... And at least to me overall, you know, you could definitely argue C.J. Stroud as a, just a better prospect than Bryce Young maybe because he might have a higher ceiling, uh, although I don't think he has a higher ceiling than Bryce Young, quite frankly, but some people do um, just because of his size and athleticism. But for me, I think that Carolina needs a Bryce Young more than they need a C.J. Stroud right now. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you took some project quarterbacks um, you know, you have another guy who, who you, you took in the draft last year in Matt Corral. Um, so there, there's, there's just not a whole lot of big game experience in that locker room in Carolina. And I think, yes, CJ Stroud did have some big game experience, but Bryce Young has more. I think he has been a more proven leader. Um, obviously, uh, he has won a billion games at Alabama. Um, so for me, I would say... I would say Bryce Young to me has always been the number one pick for the Panthers. Now, if the Bears had stayed at number one, maybe I could see them have taken C.J. Stroud. Maybe if you had to pick two, because I just don't think Bryce Young fits that system more than C.J. Stroud does. But once Carolina traded up, I thought it was going to be Bryce Young all the way. Um, and I would have felt the same if it was Indianapolis or if it was Tennessee um, you know, it, it, it just would have felt right to me for Bryce Young at number one, so I think that was great. Houston at number two and number three, I mean, that was, to me, the shock of the draft, um, you know, tr well, other than other than Will Levis, but again, we'll get to that. Um, you know, Houston drafting C.J. Stroud at number two, which, again, I thought was the right move, and then trading up to three from 12 to get uh, Will Anderson Jr. at Alabama, I thought that that was really fun. Now, do I completely agree with it no because i've always and i've said this on this channel a million times so it shouldn't be a surprise i've always been of the mindset that if your team is not good and you need a lot of depth you need to trade for more draft picks instead of less so the fact that houston traded up and gave up their first round pick next year which if you're arizona you got to be thrilled because yeah you didn't get will anderson but you got it. You traded up eventually to get Paris Johnson, who's a fantastic tackle, to help protect your number one, for, former number one overall pick quarterback, who's presumably going to be the quarterback of the future at this point. I haven't seen any evidence to the contrary, even though there's been a lot of chatter that he might not be. But presumably he will be, so you got to protect him. And you got the Houston Texans first round draft pick for this upcoming draft. So if your team is awful again, and Houston stays awful, and, and doesn't take as big a step as we're all you know, we all think they might considering the moves they made. Like if they're a top, if they're a bottom five team again, you have a chance to have two top five picks in the 2024 draft. So for Arizona, I mean, to me, it's a no brainer, but for Houston, you're rebuilding. You need more draft picks, not less. So I, I thought that it was a, you know, while it was fun, certainly. And, and I like the fact that Houston is taking a step forward and, 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 and saying the rebuild's over we're good to go. We're, we're jumping all in. 
I don't think I, I think it's a little too early. I think it's a year or maybe even two too early. Um, and I think they need more depth. They got some more depth this offseason in free agency and of course in the draft. So that's great. But I I don't think they're quite ready to be a playoff team, although the division's not all that good. So, you know, maybe it happens outside of Jacksonville. I'd say that, that it's wide open. Um, with Tennessee, is you know, pretty much completely starting over with Will Levis. Um, although maybe Tannehill starts again this year. I don't know. Maybe they give Will Levis a year to, to learn under Tannehill. I, maybe. Um, but to, to me, they're, they're rebuilding at this point, or at least they're starting a rebuild. They're not fully rebuilding because they haven't traded away everybody, though they got rid of pretty much their entire offensive line. The only guy that's still around is, uh, is Derrick Henry on the offensive side. And, um, seriously, seriously, defensive tackle. What is his name? He's an absolute animal. Jeffrey Simmons. There you go. I don't know why I was blanking. Um, but, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of talent left back on, on that team at this point. So for me, they're, they're rebuilding. Indianapolis is clearly rebuilding. You know, they just drafted AR-15 at number four. Who I, thought, who I thought that was a good pick, too. Um, they're rebuilding. And, you know, Jacksonville is obviously, at this point, they're, they're on the rise. So outside of Jacksonville, that, that, that division is pretty much wide open. You might be able to sneak a wild card spot. So if Houston, you know what? Go ahead. Go for it. I get it. But I just think it's a year too early, although it was exciting. Um, other picks that I thought were interesting, obviously the lions. I mean, for me, it was like, what are you doing? I mean, Jameer Gibbs. I love Jameer Gibbs. I would have loved for the Patriots to draft him in the second round and just have him be a weapon. But you hear what I just said in the second round, not at 12, like the Detroit lions drafted him. Uh, I feel like, cause, cause here's the thing for me. I love Jameer Gibbs, and I think that he's actually going to be a really good NFL player. I think that his 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 versatility and the fact that he can catch balls out of the backfield, he's a pretty good blocker. He's obviously a very, very strong runner. I think, you know, I think he'll be fine in the NFL. I think he might actually do really, really well for them if he can stay healthy. But the thing is, is for me, I've been Team B. John Robinson for forever. And you had the sixth pick. And you traded back and got, to me, a significantly inferior running back prospect. Now, again, I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be good in the NFL. But to me, unless you are a undeniable, no doubt, like you're probably going to be a top three running back the second you put cleats on and you put the uniform on, you should not be going top 10 in the draft if you're a running back. And a lot of people subscribe to that. I'm not somebody that thinks you should never draft a running back in the first round. I'm somebody that thinks that if you are a rebuilding team, you should never draft a running back in the first round. Because it's just not that important to draft a running back that early when oftentimes you can get running backs that are just as good, if not better, in later rounds. For instance, right? There, you know, the, the, before I actually get that, there are some exceptions, obviously. Like, you know, Josh Jacobs has been fantastic for the Raiders, even though they haven't really gone anywhere. I don't think anybody would think that the Raiders should not have drafted Josh Jacobs in the first round like they did. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure there's more, you know. But for me, that's why I wanted the Eagles to draft Bijan because I thought it made perfect sense considering they just went to the Super Bowl and... They're basically just adding to a war room full of monsters that are already there. Now, yeah, they did lose a few people in the offseason, sure, but they're still the favorite to go to the Super Bowl in the NFC as far as I'm concerned. I don't see anybody outside of maybe the 49ers that are going to beat them. Now, you could definitely argue the 49ers are the favorite, but so, you know, I'd say those two are the favorite. Either way, they're, they're one of the top two. So for me, like, Bijan Robinson, yeah, maybe running back wasn't the biggest need for them, but Bijan to me is the best player in the draft outside of Will Anderson for all positions. So going to the guys who just went to the Super Bowl, you know, if you've got a bell cow running back now, it's going to put up 15, 16, 1700 yards as a rookie. Probably if he stays healthy, like poof, that, that offense would be unstoppable. So I loved that. 
But for Atlanta, it didn't it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me for them to draft Bijan. Um, just because you know, and I understand you drafted a wide receiver in the first. You, actually, let me go in chronological order. You drafted a tight end in the first round. Skill position play. Well, not necessarily a skill position player, but offensive player, tight end number one, could be a franchise guy. I think that's fair. You drafted Drake London, wide receiver, in the first round. You're expecting a first-round wide receiver to be one of the best in the NFL. So you drafted that skill position very high up in the draft. And now you draft Bijan. What I can see that they are trying to get superstars at skill position players at a young age so that now they can start drafting and signing other positions, which they did a little bit this offseason, to, to, to be fair, Jesse Bates and, and, and a few others. So, fair enough. But I don't think a running back is going to make you go from a 500 team to a playoff team or a 12-win team. I just don't see it. I think that a running back, especially if you draft them in the first round, it's just not as valuable for a team that's not very good, and especially if they don't have a very good offensive line because you could throw a fifth-round running back back there and they may be just as effective just because the offensive line's awful, the scheme might not be great, you just don't have a lot of talent around them. So for me, it didn't make much sense. But going back to the Jameer Gibbs and the Detroit Lions stuff, you had the sixth pick, so why not just take Bijan there? I still wouldn't have loved it. I thought I would have thought that they would have probably should have prioritized other positions at that point, such as corner or linebacker or edge rusher or even wide receiver if you want to go that early. But for me, running back at six would have still been a stretch. But you know what? I would have said the same thing I said with Atlanta. I don't love the fit. I'm not sure it makes a lot of sense. But Bijan's the best player in the draft, on offense at least. So I get it. I would have said the same thing. And honestly, I think he fits better in Detroit because at least Detroit was like a technicality away from making the playoffs last year. So you could argue having a bell cow running back is going to unlock that offense and bring him to a whole other level. Maybe instead of winning eight games or nine games, they win 10 or 11 games and they make the playoffs in a division where outside of, again, one team, which is the Minnesota Vikings, you're probably the favorite to win that division at this point. So, for me, I would have liked to have seen Detroit not draft Jameer Gibbs at 12. Now, I get it. You want extra draft capital, and that that's fine. But, if you're going to take a running back in the first round, you had the sixth pick. Bijan was on the board. Take Bijan. That's the way I look at it. And then Jack Campbell in the first round. I like Jack Campbell. Didn't think he was a first round pick. I think in earlier mock drafts, I may have had him just barely sneaking into the first round at the very back end. Uh, uh, but Detroit, I, th I don't remember what number they drafted him at. I think it was like 23, 24, 26. I don't know. I, I just didn't see him going that early. Um especially later on. I definitely didn't see him going that early. So I thought that the Lions had a weird draft. I'll say that. Um, I thought the Eagles had a spectacular draft. They, they they are basically Georgia in the NFL now. They're drafting all the Georgia defensive players, which I think is great because obviously you have a dominant defense in the in, in college, in the SEC. Bring it, to, bring it to the NFL and see that competitiveness and see that fire. So, you know, to me, that makes a lot of sense. So I like that. Um, okay. Now, to the Patriots, all right? Let's talk about how the Patriots did in the first round. Now, I, I find it hysterical, at least for me, just because, for me, every year I do mock drafts on this channel. Now, it's only been a couple of years. It's only been two years that I've been doing it, obviously, but I'm going to be doing them for as many years as I do this. I'm going to be doing mock drafts. I'm going to be saying who I think the Patriots should draft in every of the all the one of the mock drafts. I'm going to tell you guys the ideal picks that I would like, you know, the ideal prospects that I'd like to see the Patriots draft, who my favorite players are on the draft. Like, I'm going to give you guys all that. And I just find it so funny because I basically should just trade back every year because that's what the Patriots do. And I've been watching the draft and watching the Patriots my whole life. So I don't know why I haven't learned my lesson at this point that they're just going to trade back over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again 
even if a prospect that will perfectly help your team is right there. Hell, even three prospects that will perfectly help your team are sitting right there. They're still not going to draft them. That's just how it's going to work. They're just going to trade back, and then, and then God know, only knows who they're going to pick. So, to me, I'm you know the draft is coming up, and I'm thinking, man, if the Patriots trade back, I'd love Brian Branch. And Brian Branch ended up going in the second round. I was so upset. I'm pretty sure he got drafted one pick before the Patriots pick in the second round, too. And whoever it was traded up. And so I, I, I can guarantee you the Patriots would have taken Brian Branch if he was still there at that point. But nonetheless, you know, I digress. I should just know my... I should just know by now. The Patriots are going to trade back. So, I think I had the Patriots trading back in in my... Maybe I had them in my last mock draft trade back. I, I can't remember how I did that. But, you know, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I'll have to go back and look. But either way... I should just know at this point that they're going to trade back. So, I'm not going to lie to you. When it got to pick 14, 14? 14. Yeah, 14. When it got to pick 14 and the Patriots were on the clock, I was so happy because my ideal first round would have been Jackson Smith and Jigba. I am a huge fan of Jackson Smith and Jigba. Again, I've said it, I'm, a, I'm an Ohio State fan in this podcast and other podcasts, but just in case you don't know for some reason. Jackson Smith and Jigba is one of my favorite wide receiver prospects I've ever had the pleasure of doing videotape on and scouting and just trying to diagnose what kind of player they're going to be. I think that Jackson Smith and Jigba will be the next great wide receiver in the NFL if he can stay healthy. Now... I don't know if he'll blossom into that right away in Seattle. Spoiler alert, Patriots didn't draft him just in case you didn't know. Because he's behind two other great wide receivers right now. Now, they could put him in the slot or they could put Tyler Lockett in the slot and have JSN and DK Metcalf on both outside boundaries for wide receivers, which, pff, forget it. I don't even want to... I don't even want to talk about it, but I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is probably a little bit better served in the slot based on his skill set. Um... But he could obviously be a fantastic outside wide receiver, too. He's a burner. He can run fast. He can go by guys. He's, you know, about a little less than 6'1", so he's not gigantic, but he's not super tiny either. So, you know, he's he's a guy that can do just about everything. Uh, and so I don't think he'll blossom into maybe, I mean, maybe he will, but I don't think he'll blossom into like a 1,500-yard wide receiver and 13 touchdowns his rookie year just because he's got two other great wide receivers on his team that are going to need the ball, too. So... Again, maybe he will, and I hope he does, but I just don't see it because of just the depth chart situation that he's got going on. But when he was at, there at 14, I'm like, oh, man. Jackson Smith and Jig was on the, cl- or on the board. You know, Christian Gonzalez is on the board, too. That would be fine, but I really love Jackson Smith and Jigba. I'd love for them to take a chance on the best wide receiver in the draft. Just go for it. And then they traded back. You know, it's just like, oh, dang it, I should have known. Like, I'm never going to get Jackson Smith and Jigba because, you know, you don't know who guys are trading up for. If a really good skill position player falls, to me at least, when somebody trades up, that's the default. Like, uh, they're going for after Will Levis, who I didn't even talk about. I, I, I do need to talk about that, by the way. Um, talk about that at the end. Um, so... You know, whether it's a quarterback, whether it's a wide receiver, whether it's a DB, whether it's an edge rusher, like positions that are valuable. You know, I'm thinking you got people are trading up for them first. So when Jackson Smith and Jigwa starts falling, you know, I'm like, oh, somebody traded up for, 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 for him. I saw it was the Steelers. I'm like, huh. I don't think they need wide receiver. But you know what? They take a million wide receivers every year anyway. So maybe they are going to take Jackson Smith and Jigwa. They didn't. They took... Um, I don't remember who they took. They took a tackle. I'm blanking on who they took, but it wasn't wasn't a, wasn't Jackson Smith and Jigba at all. Uh, and then you know, so we traded back to 17, and now we're at 17, and Christian Gonzalez and Jackson Smith and Jigba are both on the board. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. you got to be kidding me! Like this is great. 
And I, I said, I was like, hey, I love Jackson Smith and Jigba. That would be ideal. I would love that. But you know what? If we take Christian Gonzalez, that's great too. Because he's a, probably a top 10 to 12 prospect, maybe even sooner for a lot of people, you know, because there was a lot of debate whether he was CB1 or CB2. I personally like Devin Witherspoon a little better just because he's the kind of player I gravitate to. You know, he's the scrappy guy. He's very physical. Yeah, he's a little undersized, but he makes up for it with physicality and guts. And, like, I just relate more to that. So maybe that's just my own personal bias to the kind of player he is. Uh, and he's just a he's just a hammer, dude. Like, he, he, he hits people hard. So, like, I, that's just kind of football I like, and I just kind of gravitate more towards that kind of player. But Christian Gonzalez, like, the more I watched tape of him leading up to the draft, the more I was like, man, this guy, if he gets in the right situation, this guy's going to be scary good. I mean, he's just so smooth and fluid and effortless in everything he does. He has long, long arms, so his press ability is phenomenal, even just coming right out of the draft. Although, maybe I'm not watching the right tape, but a lot of scouts seem to think his press is actually his weakest point, but from what I saw, he seems to be fine, but you know, maybe, maybe I need to watch more tape. And obviously, I'll see him a lot more up close, because, spoiler, where he got drafted, but yeah, uh, I was like, hey, Christian Gonzalez would be great, too. You know, I'd take either one of those guys because we need some we need some defensive back help for sure. Um, the ninety seven Joneses in the back, uh, you know, in the back nine <laughs> for the Patriots in the secondary, not gonna get it done all the time. Uh, can't just have nothing but Joneses back there. Uh, although, you know, obviously, you know, Jonathan Jones and Jack Jones did both did pretty well this year. But either way, uh, we need some defensive back help. We need some, especially an outside corner, so like it makes sense. But I would just love Jackson Smith and Jigba. I'm a huge fan of his game. And then, so they picked Gonzalez. I was like, okay, like that, fine. You know, not, I was happy about it. I was because I like Christian Gonzalez and I think that he fits the Patriots perfectly. And he's exactly what we need in the secondary as a number one boundary corner. But at the same time, I would have loved Jackson Smith and Jigba. So I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, didn't know how to feel. And then obviously he went, he meaning Jackson Smith and Jigba went three picks later to the Seahawks. I was hoping the Patriots would trade up because they had like 15 draft picks. It was ridiculous how many they had. I was hoping they'd use some of it to trade back up if, if Smith and Jigba kept falling, but it obviously didn't happen. Um, didn't really trade up uh, a whole lot in the draft either. I think we might have traded up like once in the fourth round at one point or traded into the fifth round. I don't know. Like back, back and stuff. Like they didn't, they didn't trade up a whole lot. So, um, yeah, it was one of those things where I I liked the pick a lot, but I would have just rather had JSN just for my own personal bias. But, hey, listen, the pick itself, I mean, the Patriots had a great draft. I mean, this time last year, if you guys remember, one of my favorite videos to, you know, to kind of tell people about or to introduce them to my podcast is me ranting about how bad the Patriots draft was last year. I don't know if you guys saw that. If you have, go check it out. It's one of my favorite videos I've done just because I got a giant weight off my chest and I just was so angry and I needed to explode. Um, it's so much better when they have a good draft, you know? So much more peaceful. You get to go about your life and not be angry for a few days. It's, it's very nice. It's very nice. So I think the Patriots had a great draft and it started with that. I mean, first of all, you got the guy you wanted, clearly. I mean, they wanted Christian Gonzalez, they got him. And he fits the team perfectly. And from what I saw when he, you know, uh, when he walked up to the podium and in his interviews, he fits the personality of the Patriots too. Bland, you know, not smiling, you know, no jokes, no anything crazy, no real flashy stuff. Although he did have, I think, the Colombian, is he Colombian? I think he's Colombian. Flag in his suit, which I thought was cool. Um, you know, outside of that, I mean, eh, there wasn't really a whole lot to report on. He wasn't super excited. He wasn't really happy. He wasn't really mad. He was just kind of meh. And I'm like, yep, he's a patriot already. He knows. He gets it. No, no, no emotions, no personality, no fun. You just, you're in the, you're on the Patriots and that's it. So he's got it. He's, he's already there. Uh, you know, so I, I thought that, that not only getting him who fits the team perfectly, but trading back and getting an extra fourth round pick to to also take that guy, 
at 17 and a guy who probably could have gone top 10 in a lot of other drafts if, if we were in a parallel universe. Whoo! Like, we've seen corners go way earlier in a lot of drafts in the past than they should have gone. And in this one, the Patriots got a fantastic corner that fits their team perfectly. Like, probably anywhere from 7 to 10 picks after he should have gone, and they traded back and got extra draft capital for later. Brilliant start to the draft. Keon White, I thought, was a really, really good uh, uh, pick there as well in the second round. I think that, you know, while edge rusher was not the biggest need, I actually had the Patriots at one of my mock drafts going Lucas Van Ness, or at the very least, I talked heavily about it. Maybe I didn't end up drafting Lucas Van Ness there, but I, I would have been okay with him going, and I think he went one pick before the Patriots, too. Um, the pay, the first round pick for the Patriots. So, um, fine, whatever. Um, I think that we still need help for pass rush. And Keon White is a guy that can play standing up. He can play with his hand in the dirt. He can play on a three point. He can, he can do anything on the defensive line. He can, heck, he, heck, he can even stand up and be, you know, a, a stand up linebacker or a stand up pass rusher. He can be a defensive tackle. Defensive end, outside linebacker. He can move all over the defensive line and play in a multitude of different ways uh, and, and and basically play himself on the field in all four downs. You know, he, he's he's big enough that you feel comfortable at 285. You know, six foot four or six foot five, 285, big guy. Uh, you could stick him on the inside on pass downs um, and, and, and feel like he can get some pressure up the middle. But also you feel comfortable putting him in rundowns because he is a guy that can eat up blocks and take up space because he is, he's not 250 or 260, he's 285, he's a bigger guy. So, you know, in theory, he, he'd be a little better just, you know, build-wise in a run defense as well. So, you know, he's a guy that you could play on all four downs. Now, whether he will play on all four downs to the Patriots is completely, you know, it's just a wait-and-see kind of thing. But he has the profile to play all four downs. He has the versatility to play all four downs. So I think it's a great pick uh, and a good weapon for for Bill Belichick and that defense to utilize. Um, Marte Mapu out of, Sa out of uh, I almost said San Francisco State. That's not right. Sacramento State. I don't know what happened there. Um, but I thought that he was a solid pick as well. I mean, to say that I knew a ton about Marte Mapu going into the draft, I mean, just, I would just be lying to you. I, I didn't. He was from Sacramento State, guys. Like, come on. Like, how much do you expect a man to know, right? Uh, so, you know, I thought he was, I thought he was really, really versatile. You know, once he got drafted, I was able to kind of look at, look into his, his backstory and look at some tape and, and, and find out some stuff. And man, this guy, you know, this guy is, is, is a different form of Kyle Duggar. And, and what I mean is, so Kyle Duggar to me is up for interpretation. Kyle Duggar to me is more of a linebacker than a safety. I think he's more of a thumper. He's a little bit better in rundowns than he is dropping back in pass coverage. Now, he's not bad at pass coverage. I'm not saying that, but I just think that he he he's fits better. His profile fits better as like a, a strong safety slash linebacker on the inside. Whereas Marte Mapu, I think, is the opposite, where I think he can slide down and play linebacker, but I think he he is a guy that's better suited covering tight ends and bigger wide receivers, bigger and a little bit slower wide receivers than he is being a thumper. But both guys are versatile enough to play linebacker and safety, drop back into coverage, and be in the box. Like, I think Marte Mapu is going to kind of be a perfect complement to Kyle Duggar. Um, and now, I don't know if they're planning on playing both of them at the same time, or if they're, you know, planning on playing one in certain certain uh, um, certain schemes and the other in certain schemes, or if one's not really going to play much at all, whereas the other is going to play a ton. If that's the case, I expect Kyle Duggar to play a ton and Marte Mapu not to play a whole lot. But either way, um, I like that pick as well. Um, uh, obviously, you know, the, the we went on a run of offensive linemen for a little while there. Um, so not a whole lot to talk about there. I mean, offensive linemen are offensive linemen. You draft them late in drafts. It's what you do. We needed some offensive line depth. Fine. That's fine with me. Uh would I have liked flashier picks? Maybe a couple more wide receivers. Maybe, a, I don't know, another corner. Did we draft another corner? I don't think we did. Maybe we did. I don't remember. They had a million picks, guys. I can't remember all of them. I mean, I'm serious. I think they had 12. I'm pretty sure they had 12 picks. Like, so many. 
Uh, <laughs> so many picks. Um, but what what did catch my eye was when they drafted Kayshawn Beauty out of uh, LSU. Uh, now, so for me, I thought that was one of the steals of the draft because uh, I know when I started, you know, after last year's draft, when I started very lightly prepping for this year's draft, pretty much right away as we all kind of have to do, we all kind of have to go with, you know, hey, let's look at who's upcoming, who, who experts think are going to be first-round picks next year, keep our eyes on some people, and then as the year goes along, people move up, people move down, people drop out of the draft entirely because they're staying in school or just because they weren't any good or injuries or whatever. People come out of absolutely nowhere from other countries or from other, you know, colleges, and they hadn't played a lick at Ohio State, and then they transferred to West Virginia and put up almost Heisman Trophy numbers or whatever. You know, things happen all the time. So at the very beginning, Kayshawn Beauty was a first-round projected pick. I mean, he was a phenomenal athlete and a phenomenal prospect. He had put up like 1,800 yards at LSU or something crazy like that um, two years ago or 1,400, whatever it was. And then last year was just a train wreck. He got hurt. He played poorly. He didn't show a whole lot of effort. He didn't seem to care, you know. And then his combine, when he got invited to the combine, it was awful. I mean, he was ranking, you know, bottom third in just about every aspect. You know, strength, speed, agility, hands. Everything was just a, a disaster. His pro day was a disaster. Everything over the last couple of years has been a disaster. Now, I don't know why it's been a disaster. Hopefully, you know, he turns it around. But I'll tell you what. If the Patriots even get half of the player he was in college, half of the production, and he ends up turning into something, a good number three wide receiver, a solid number two wide receiver, that's a steal of a sixth-round pick right there. I mean, again, Kayshawn Beauty, it cannot be harped on enough, was, if you go back in early mock drafts of 2023, back in, like, April of 2022, people projecting a year ahead, Kayshawn Beauty was a top 10 or top 15 pick by most people. Like, he was that good. He was supposed to be the number two wide receiver in the draft right behind Jackson Smith and Jigba. So, the fact that, yeah, he had a train wreck of a season and a train wreck of a combine and a train wreck of a pro day really hurt his draft stock, obviously. So, you got him in the sixth round. Now, instead of taking a first round pick and it being a train wreck, now, if he's a sixth round pick and he's a train wreck, who cares? He's a sixth round pick, but you got a guy who at one point was universally considered one of the best wide receivers in college. If not the very best. So... I think it's a huge steal for the Patriots. I don't think enough people are talking about it. Um, not to say that he's going to be the next great wide receiver. He m probably won't be. Because, again, the last year of his life has been a complete train wreck. So, y you, you think maybe something's going on up here or he just doesn't have anything going on. Not that he doesn't have anything going on up there. That, that didn't come out right, but... That he just doesn't have the mental strength to, to push forward and to be an NFL player. Perhaps. I don't know. But, heck, you took a sixth, you took a chance on him in the sixth round. He's talented, clearly. Let's see what he's got. So, I thought that was great. That's going to be the end of my thoughts on the Patriots draft. I do want to talk about Will Levis because I said I was going to and I forgot. So, I'm going to talk about it now. Will Levis got drafted in the second round. Man, that was nuts. I, I was so confused because, look, I'll be honest. I'm not a big fan of Will Levis. I, I, I don't, I, I tried to be as cordial as possible as it pertained to Will Levis um, during the draft process because I got to be honest, I didn't see what other people saw. I mean, people thought he was a top five pick. Like, I just didn't see it. I just didn't see it. Like, but... There are some opinions that I have to try and keep to myself, right? Like, if I'm the only person on the entire planet that thinks that Will Levis was not a top 10 talent, 
then maybe I'm wrong. I mean, that's probably probably pretty likely that I'm wrong in that instance. So, you know, I saw him going, you know, top 20 in the draft. I'm like, all right, I get it. Then I started seeing him go top 15. I'm like, okay, yeah, there's some bad teams. Then I saw him going top 10, and I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'd take him top 10. Then I saw him going top four, top five, and I'm like, oh, God. I, I, I would just have been so disappointed if I was a team drafting him top five. Now, I didn't want to say that before the draft started because I felt like I was the only one who felt that way. So I just went, you know what? The experts are saying that he's this good. Maybe I'm missing something. So I just, in that aspect, I just kind of went along with that. Like, I put him where I thought he would fit. You know, typically I didn't put him in, in you know, top five scenarios. Although I think by the end I might have just because everybody else was. And I just was like, okay, I guess if I guess if that's what people are hearing, we're this close to the draft, I guess that's what's happening. Um, but if it was up to me, not that he wouldn't have been a first round pick. Obviously, he would have been a first round pick for me. Like it's not not that I didn't think he was any good. I just didn't see the top five or top ten hype that people were giving. Now, again, to say that I didn't think he'd be a first round pick is not true at all. I mean, I was sure he'd be one just based on raw ability. Uh, but you know. It didn't, it shocked me, but it, it, out of all the, it would have really shocked me if AR-15 was the one that this happened, that this happened, <laughs> it's been a long few weeks, guys, that this happened to, there you go, I can speak English, I would have been really shocked if that had happened, but the fact that it happened to Will Levis, it didn't, it shocked, again, it shocked me a little bit, because I really thought that just based on raw ability, he'd go in the first round. Or at least somebody would trade up for him at the very back end of the first round like they did Lamar Jackson a few years ago. But it didn't happen. He went, you know, seven or eight picks into the second round. Like, man, that is wild. That is wild. Um, I mean, good luck in Tennessee, dude. I, I really I really hope that uh, I really hope that you do well. Um, I think you're probably already better than Ryan Tannehill, but I've never had a high opinion of Ryan Tannehill, so... Um, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I, I hope that it works out for him. I like the fact that Tennessee took a swing on a quarterback, um, even one that I don't believe in as much as the other ones, like I do Will Levis, right? Tennessee, you needed something. You needed something to hang your hat on. I get it. Go for a quarterback. Go get your guy. I like it. So, good for Tennessee. Hope it works out for Will Levis. And I hope he uses it as a chip. And I hope he ends up uh, becoming great. Uh, and, and being a great quarterback for the NFL. Because again, I, like I said with the John Moran stuff earlier, I don't wish failure upon anyone. I don't want any player to fail. I don't want any player to play poorly and end up losing their career. Like Just because I don't particularly see first round, not maybe not first round, but like top 20 pick potential in Will Levis doesn't mean that he doesn't have it or that I don't want to see it. It's just that I don't see it currently and maybe he can grow into it. I don't know. But we'll see either way. Um, fun pick for the Tennessee Titans. Not a fun day and a half for Will Levis, I'm sure, but hey, what are you going to do? Hey guys, me again. Thank you so much for watching one of my clips from the Lopes Goes Last podcast. These clips are so much fun to do. I absolutely love making them and I absolutely love doing them. And this podcast is my baby. So I really want this thing to grow and I really want it to succeed. So if you did like what you see, please subscribe. Also hit that bell notification so you never miss any one of my episodes or one of my clips like this one. And please do also like and share these videos with your friends and your family so that we can make this thing grow as fast as possible. And I wanted to thank you again so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day.